I'd like to call the March meeting of the Board of Education to order. I'd like to uh, start by saying that the board did meet in work session at 4 o'clock today, and we heard a presentation from the Curry Tuck County Library Foundation and Digital Library. We also had a discussion on Dominion Power right away at Curry Tuck County High School. We received a budget update from Superintendent Scholler and Lori Trussell, our finance officer. We also discussed budget amendments and received the first reading of policies from series 7,000 and 4,000, which are personnel policies and student health policies. Now I'd like to uh, introduce Brett Dennison, who's a junior at Curry Tuck County High School and became an Eagle Scout in December. He received 91 merit badges. You only need 21 to become an Eagle Scout, and he will lead us in the invocation tonight. Brett? Invocation. I don't want this. Am I leading the pledge too? <laughs> no. no. Invocation. Invocation. If you would join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And you wanted to read something about uh, Boy Scouts? Yeah, I've been asked to read this. Okay. Out of every 100, out of every 100 boys that enter scouting, 30 will drop out in their first year. 12 will be brought from families that belong to no church. Six of those will be brought into contact with church and continue to stay there. Three will become pastors. Four will reach the rank of Eagle Scout. 45 will ser serve in the military. One will use scouting skills to save someone else's life and three will use the skills to save their own lives. Seventeen will later serve as adult volunteers with scouting. Eight will find their future life vacations and jobs from scouting, and five will receive church emblems. Only four out of every 100 boys in America today will become Boy Scouts, but these are among the top tier that serve in our nation's businesses, politics and religions. Three out of four senators were scouts and over half of our presidents have been scouts. A nationwide survey showed that of senior class presidents, 89% were scouts. Of junior class presidents, 80%. Student council presidents, 85. School newspaper editors, 88. Football captains, 71. And ba basketball captains, 64. With those that have made Eagle Scout, it includes the names like John Glenn, Ross Parrott, and Steven Spielberg. But what about those that haven't made Eagle? Is it just a waste of time? The Scouts have aims and methods. Things fa found in the Scout Oath and Law stay with the Scouts for the rest of their lives. Advancement is certainly one of the best thing, the main goals for a Scout, but a lot more is earned on the way to Eagle Scout for those who don't make it. Other names that have never made the rank of Eagle Scout but still are recognized today are those like John F. Kennedy, Jimmy Stewart, Harrison Ford, Bill Gates, and Paul McCartney. The list goes on and on. This just goes to show that scouting does make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations on becoming an Eagle Scout. Thank you. Next, our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by a student from Dr. W.T. Griggs Elementary and Principal Brenda Hunt will introduce him. Good evening, how are you? I have with me tonight Riley Hammock and she is our student body secretary and she is the daughter of Judd and Libby Hammock and she's going to lead our pledge. Would you all please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. He 
Riley, thank you very much. Did a nice job. This month, our school spotlight is also on Dr. W. T. Griggs Elementary, and I'll turn it over to Principal Brenda Hunt again. Um, with me tonight, um, I have um, two teachers and also a teacher from the high school that they partnered with. Um, we're going to do a short presentation, first of all, with Ms. Meidinger and myself. She's a fifth grade teacher, and I also brought a couple of students with me. Um, we're going to talk about first in math. Um, if um, Katie Davis and Zane Liverman will please stand. I'm going to ask them before we get started to tell you their rank and one thing that they really love about first in math, and then we'll show our presentation. Katie, tell them your rank and one thing you love. Um, in the city, I believe that I'm 64th, and the most thing that I love about first in math is the now and show, because they have 24 questions that you can do, and they really approve for your, for your math skills. I'm in 60th place in OC math, and the thing that I like about it is that it's been improving my grades. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Are we ready? Let's start it. Right here. You can sit right there. Little icon right there. Over. I'm glad I can see it on that thing. <laughs> um, First in Math is a program that our HSA bought for us. They purchased it for a two-year time period. And basically, it's an online math program that works with basic math skills. Um, it is aligned with the Common Core. It's also very individualized. Um, you can use it for remediation and for also for enrichment. Um, the kids really like it because it's kind of 21st century. They think they're playing games, but really they're working on core math skills. First in Math is created by Robert Sun, who also created Math 24, and that's a competition that many of the schools in this county participate in. So the First in Math program also helps with that. It's also a research-based program in the sense that it um, uses deep practice, which is the same thing as mastery learning. Um, and basically, the kids will stay on a skill until they have completely mastered it. it gives them immediate feedback. Um, the research behind it is brain-based research, where um, the more you do with mastery learning, it increases the myelin in the brain, which makes your synapses stronger and makes you think faster and you remember things um, quicker. And now we have, uh, we did some interviews with our top ranking students. Um, currently, there are 6,000 schools in the nation, and our fifth grade class is number 72 in the nation out of 6,000 fifth grade classes. Um, and our school currently, if I get this correct, it changes every week because they really want to be first. They are, as a school, we are number eight in the state of North Carolina right now. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple thousand schools in North Carolina that are doing it. Um, our goal is to be nationally ranked for our school. So hopefully next year, because we actually as a school, we got a late start. And first, the primary kids didn't actually get started until um, January and the other folks about October we got started so we got a late start so our goal is um, to do that um, if you'll go ahead hi what are you guys doing Just playing first in math. Katie can you tell me what first in math is it's a program to help you with your math skills to get better at it hmm. what do you guys like about first in math Zane Great. Ryan? I do. I like that it's improved my math skills and I learned different things. Katie? I like everything about it because it's just educational and you can and you can learn a lot about it. Chris. I like first in math because it's very educational and it helps me improve my math yeah. skills. Is it fun? A plus yes. fun. A lot of fun. A lot. So you get to have fun while doing math? Has it helped you with your math skills in any way? Can you tell me anything that has anything improved in your math, Katie? With my decimals, I'm not very good at them, but after I've been playing first in math, I'm definitely probably getting A pluses on the way. Great. Chris?
Chris? Um, it's helped me improve knowing decimals, negative numbers, and flat out adding and subtracting better, yeah. and fractions. What are your goals for first in math? Zane, can you tell me, do you have a rank right now? I'm in, I think, 57th place in the state. In the state, wow, that's amazing. And what is your goal? My goal is to get him to the national. Wow, Ryan? Um, what is your ranking? My ranking, I am first in the school, and in the state, I am 26th. That's amazing. Katie? I am second in the school with 8,366, and I'm ranked second in the school, and then I'm ranked, isn't it 50th? Yeah, 50th in the state, and I really want to get up to the nationals. So that's your goal is to get to nationals. What do you have to do to get to nationals? You have to get up to, was it 15,000? Uh, right now it's like 18,000. Yeah. And what is, where are you at right now? I'm at 8,366. So that's possible to do before the end of the year. Very and possible. The bad thing is that they went too, so it'll be harder to yeah. catch up to. Aha. And Christopher, what is your ranking? Um, my ranking is fifth at a whole school and 100th out of the whole state. That's amazing. You guys are great math students. I hope you keep it up. 7,091 stickers. Great. Second thing that I like about it is I was a two minute math until I started playing this. Yeah. Really? All of you guys? I, I used to get B's in math, but now I'm getting A and A pluses. I, I was getting. My first ever math grade was, was a D, and then I've improved it all the way to an A plus and a B. That is fabulous. My, I've improved my B until, until now. Great. I'm glad you guys like the program. Would you recommend it to anybody else? Yes. Everyone in the whole entire world. I would like to <laughs> anybody in everybody. Even if it's... And then, and the next clip, and you can cut the next one a little bit short because I don't want to take up too much time. Um, the next one is two kindergartners, and they had only been doing first in math, I think, two weeks when they recorded um, them about the program. And the little boy in the video is Drew Veal, and um, he has informed us that you can do first in math on your iPod, on your mama's iPhone, and uh, several <laughs> other devices that he uses. Doing first in math. What is first in math? Through? A place where you can learn more math, <coughs> learn more math skills, get paid for your school, and you can also have some really good fun even doing math. Do you do it on paper or do you do it on a computer? Computers or paper. Oh, you can do both? Is there anything you really like about it, Ava? There's puzzles, true. Uh, that you can do different levels of the math. Oh, do you think it's helping you become a better math student? Yes. And is it fun? Yes. Would you recommend it to other students? Yes. And is it competition? And the fun thing about First in Math, it, it is a competition, so the kids really like the competition. The teachers have done a good job of using it as a motivator. And when you go into our school, um, actually, uh, Riley and some of my student council girls, they keep track of everyone's ranking. It's posted in the school, and who the top class of the week, they get a trophy. And at the end of each nine weeks, we give them a little treat. So it's um, something fun for them, and they're learning a whole lot. In addition tonight, I have Miss Steigelman, and tell me the lady from the high school. Miss Kimball. Miss Kimball. And um, they did first and second grade pen pals, so they're going to share that now. Good evening. Um, a lot of good things happen at professional development, and that's really what happened with Donna Steigelman and um, 
me when one, one afternoon we were attending a professional workshop in Elizabeth City for AIG and we started talking and then before you know it, we were collaborating and we've been doing it for seven years. Um, and um, we have, um, what I thought I would do is read a short letter that my creative writing students did um, for a newspaper article and this was done in 2008. I think it explains pretty much everything that um, our collaboration with first graders and high school students is about. <clears throat> Pen Pal Fun, written by a small group of CCHS students from Creative Writing 1 and 2. It was a wonderful ending to a somewhat mysterious beginning. Three years ago, Ms. Steigelman, a first grade teacher at Griggs Elementary, and Ms. Kimball, a Creative Writing and English teacher at Currituck County High School, met for the first time and decided to give Ms. Kimball's class a purposeful, authentic writing assignment, Pen Pals. Thus began the ongoing collaboration between these two teachers and their classes. It was second semester of 2008 when Ms. Kimball brought letters from Ms. Steigelman's class to her creative writing students. These classes exchanged letters, pictures, writings, handcrafted valentines, St. Patrick Day cards, and Easter cards throughout the semester. Visits were exchanged too. The first one came when Griggs Elementary first graders came to Currituck High School on Tuesday, April the 15th, 2008. The students shared a pizza party as well as fun and games. The creative writing students walked their pen pals around the halls to visit classrooms. They visited Mrs. Martin's and Ms. McPherson's classes to see the animals and fish. They saw the cafeteria and Mr. Rhodes' construction class project. They sat in desk in Ms. Baker's math classroom and wrote math messages on the board to her students when they returned from lunch. After a while, the children were getting antsy and wanted to play. The high school students took them out to the football field and the track field to play, race, and run. The second visit was planned for May 15, 2008. The high school writers began making plans to create a gift for their pen pals. That gift was to be a book, not just any book, but a book that would impact the first graders for years to come. The books were written based on facts and dreams that the first graders had shared in their many letters and cards. Various styles were designed from computer-generated images to hand-painted and hand-drawn creations. Finally, May 15th arrived and the high schoolers loaded on a bus and rode to Griggs to visit their pen pals for the last time. They were greeted with a huge welcome sign and beautiful smiling faces. They all enjoyed a picnic lunch and a recess to remember on the playground. The pen pals read and shared books. Near the end of the afternoon, they all enjoyed a make your own ice cream Sunday party. Final goodbyes, phone numbers, and addresses were exchanged between everyone. The high schoolers piled back into the bus and rode back to the high school to finish out the rest on an exhausting but fun-filled, never-to-be-forgotten day. It was a wonderful way to wrap up the end of a long year for everyone. And um, this was written by just a small group of creative writing students, and, and that was in 2008. Um, and Donna and I keep... Rolling. Um, we haven't done it alone, though. There are so many thank yous. And um, instead of going through a long list, we put a lot in pictures that we're going to share with you. But before we do that, um, we did have some thank yous to help us with this Prezi presentation that we did. Um, Brittany Hernandez, a Spanish teacher at the high school, she got us started on it and told us to do this type of presentation. And Hannah Antons, who finished up the project um, and provided us the music. And, of course, Jack Johnson, that we wish he could be here, but <laughs> couldn't get him. Um, we have so, so many parents, just so many parents over the years that cupcakes, cookies, candy, just being there. Um, teachers at both schools, at Griggs Elementary School, at our high school, that just welcomed the students into their class. It was never looked at as being an interruption. Um, 
the bus drivers who um, would take us and pick us up and stay because they were just having a good time that day. Um, administration at both schools over the years. Um, Diane Newburn, who was at the elementary school and we were at the elementary school, and now she's at the high school, so she's seen both sides now. Um, and to Sandy Kinsel, who has come in at the very beginning and continues to come every time we say, hey, guess what? We're having a pen pal party. You know, we'd love to have you come and uh, interacts with the children and takes photographs for us. So there are so many thank yous. And it's been a wonderful project um, and one that we hope, you know, will be carried on throughout the year. So we'll show our pictures and then we have a few uh, students that wanted to share and you can ask questions to them and they have some of their books that they've had over the years. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to introduce you to some of our students. Hannah's the uh, high school student that was able to come tonight. If you'll bring your books. Um, Riley? Yeah. Is Liam? Yeah. Would you like to go and share your book? Okay. <laughs> they can ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your book that you, you He's did? trying to read his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. right. Good job. Very good job. Um, this book was made from my first pair of pieces. And here, here's me. She would want it to go out to 
see the go on the planets on their own. It's a book about friends in outer space. I this tells this and that tells you who, who, when she was the very first time we went about when she till when she made this book. This is Isis Jordan. Now, Isis was your pen pal at the high school? Yep. I got a new one. You got a new I, one since then? Yeah, <laughs> and she made a book called Sand Scientist. Wow. And did you enjoy it? He is student at Carita County High School. How long did it take you? He parent How long did it take you? It's in his book in New York. Did you pass it Where he has lived for eight years. One day he hopes to visit the planets herself. This is the first book he was he has made and hopes upon enjoy it. It's a lot. And what grade are you in? Thank you. I appreciate you sharing. Now he did that when you were first. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, good <laughs> student. <laughs> what a wonderful job. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yours was on the video. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I'm Hannah Antons. I'm a senior at Curset County High School, and this is my second year having Miss Kimball as a creative writing teacher and being paired with a first grader from Miss Stagelman's class for a pen pal. Um, it's a very, it's an incredible experience. Uh, you get just to interacting with them, and you learn from them, and they learn from you, and it, it's it's a really great experience because it gives them someone to look up to. And I know the pen pals that I have had, they've, the books that I've made for them, they're based on things that I've picked up from them, from meeting them and talking to them and from what they've written to me. And I know a lot of the high schoolers, when they go to make these books for their pen pals, they put a lot of themselves and a lot of their pen pals' um, personality, personality into these books, and they work really hard on them. And in the end, the students, they the little kids, they love them. They're, they carry them around. I know Riley loves his book very much. And <laughs> um, this, uh, I, my book for Mary, Mary Indo, she's unable to be here tonight. She was my first pen pal. Um, she, she loves her book. She, her mom had messaged me and told me that she sleeps with it. And so <laughs> they, they're just, it's, it's a really great experience and program that it definitely needs to keep on going. So, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's really nice to see that we have teachers and administrators that try to make learning fun and exciting for students because that just draws out the energy from them, makes them want to learn even more. <coughs> anyway, thank all the students that are involved for us, you know, at Griggs Elementary and the First and Math program and also the you know, students that are involved in the Pen Pal program. And Ms. Steigelman and Ms. Kimball, thank you for working this. How many years have you said you've been doing this? Seven. Seven years? Wow. That's great. And it's also nice to know that the... Still friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's also nice to know that the younger students can learn from the older students and the older ones can learn from the younger ones. You know, that's real uh, refreshing to know. So once again, thank you very much. And if you want the younger students to leave now, that's okay. Okay, next up we have uh, three recognitions tonight. We'll start with the aviation poster contest winners, Superintendent Scholler.
May I have uh, Michelle Mixon and Kaylee DeFlore, if you're here, if you guys want to come up to the front? Good evening, board members. As you all know, um, we're trying to promote an awareness of aviation in our county. Um, the College of the Albemarle is going to open up an aviation and technical training center soon, and Elizabeth City State University has a program in aviation and aeroscience, aerospace science. So this year I ran across a poster contest sponsored by uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation, and I sent it out, and Mrs. Judy Ramsey, who's the AIG teacher in our county, um, she had two state winners um, in this poster contest, so we're very, very proud of that. This is Michelle Mixon, and she's from Jarvisburg Elementary School. Michelle came in third in our intermediate um, category, so she will go on to be a national contestant in Arizona. This is this con she won't go to Arizona, but <laughs> this this contest is sponsored by Embry Riddle Aeronautic University. So it's some very good recognition for her. And um, we don't have her poster. Hopefully they're gonna send have they sent it back to you? We'll have to show it off when we get it back. Okay. But I would like to present this award, the student recognition to Michelle Mixon for coming in third in North Carolina in the aviation poster contest. <laughs> Congratulations, Michelle. And we will also present Kaylee DeFlor her certificate. And she is from Mayock Elementary School, so we were represented all over the county. And tell Kaylee congratulations for us, too. Okay, next we have District 1 NCTAA Teacher Assistant of the Year, and Whitney Bisding will present her. Greetings, Board of Education, Ms. Scholler. I'm proud to be here tonight to recognize the accomplishments of Teresa Sawyer, who's one of our teacher assistants at Mayock Elementary. She was selected by North Carolina District 1 as our teacher assistant of the year district-wise and was recently interviewed for the North Carolina Teacher Assistant of the Year for the entire state, and I'm pleased to announce that she was indeed the person that they selected to represent our state. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> been a TA here in Currituck County for 19 years and she's worked in a variety of classroom settings. She's currently a teacher assistant in the core reading program. She's an officer in the board of, on the board of the county's teacher assistance association. She works with our Relay for Life team. She serves on our school improvement team. She serves on our PBIS <laughs> team and she also collaborates regularly with classroom teachers to provide quality instructional opportunities for our students and we are so fortunate to have such a skilled and talented teacher assistant in our school and she is certainly worthy of the title of North Carolina's teacher assistant of the year. Thank you. Great. Teresa, thank you and congratulations. What an honor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, next we have recognition of the CCHS band by Lindsay Eskins, the band director. Let's see if I can make make it through this without running out coughing. I've already told my student Erin that she'll uh, she'll pick up the rest rest of the speech for me <laughs> if I have to run out. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> Um, Dr. Dobney, Mrs. Scholler, Mrs. Newburn, and board members. On behalf of the Currituck County High School Band Program, I would like to say thank you for the opportunities you have provided for our band students. In the past year, we have had students participate in festivals that have not only made a difference in their lives musically, but they've also made a difference in their lives. So, um, <clears throat> these festivals include the Eastern North Carolina All District Band Festival, Suzanne Mullins, um, was in the ranks of um, one of the best clarinet players in our district here, um, North Carolina. Um, at the Carolina Band Festival, we went to UNC Greensboro. Um, five students auditioned among 400 students who auditioned and were accepted um, from a five-state area. And so we um, got to take uh, five band students to um, UNCG. Um, 
Also, Suzanne Mullins was the very first high school student ever to be accepted at the um, Carolina um, Conductors Conference. And the Conductors Conference is for um, directors and professional conductors um, from all over the United States. And actually, um, Suzanne Mullins got the pleasure to attend it and meet Dr. Gary Green from the University of Miami, and we all got to work with him, so that was wonderful. <clears throat> Um, we also went to the Honors Jazz Festival at UNC Pembroke. Uh, four students participated in the clinics with um, professors from UNC Pembroke and got to meet the world-famous saxophonist Kenny Holman. He uh, recorded with Lady Gaga, and he also recorded with Janet Jackson, so he's actually very famous. Um, Currituck High School has been the most represented band program from the Eastern District in all of these festivals. These students could not have achieved such accomplishments without your support, so thank you very much. Um, in addition to the marching band contests, the symphonic band performed at the North Carolina Music Performance Adjudication in Havelock last year for the first time since 2009. The group received an excellent rating. We will be participating in the 2013 MPA next Wednesday. Um, I would I would personally like to say thank you to Paul O'Brien and the Currituck County Technology Department. They have provided us with the computers and software needed to run our 21st century band program classroom. Last but not least, I would like to say thank you for your efforts to provide the Currituck Marching Knights with new uniforms. I have with me two students from Currituck High School who would like to speak about the new uniforms. First, I have Jonathan Bennett, and he's actually modeling the new uniform for you. So I forced him to come on up and show you all how wonderful <laughs> they look. <laughs> all right. Oh. That's nasty. Yeah, walk, walk on down the runway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these We have not received new uniforms in over 13 years, and so um, these create a new look for the high school. Um, they're very contemporary, and um, they just they look sharp, I'm sure you can tell. Um, by next year, we'll have all white gloves, and so they'll be very, very regal looking. <laughs> um, and Jonathan Bennett actually um, was our student that attended the most festivals. He placed in both the UNC Pembroke Jazz Honors Festival and um, he also placed in the UNC Greensboro Jazz Festival. He's the only student to make it into the senior band, so he's also a very talented trombonist. So thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> um, and next, I'll call up Erin Wadley. She's a sophomore from Currituck High School. She plays the French horn, and she would like to tell you um, her thoughts on the new uniforms. Okay. Hey, I'm Erin. Um, I would like to thank you for providing the Currituck County Marching Knights the time, money, and other materials needed to, pur to purchase the new uniforms. They look wonderful, as you can tell, and the school, band, and especially myself deeply appreciate your assistance. These uniforms and the musicians wearing them will represent the school with the utmost regard during football games, competitions, and other activities and events. It is my honor to represent Currituck County High School, and I can't wait to see the reaction of the community when we march in them for the first time. Thanks again. Thank you. The marching band will be revealing the whole group in these new, new uniforms this Saturday at the St. Patrick's Day Parade at 1 o'clock in the Outer Banks, so we're excited to reveal the whole group, so thank you. Lindsay, thank you for all your hard work and effort with the band and trying to make our band one of the best in the state. Thank you. And I would also like to mention 13 years ago you, was the last time you got new uniforms. Well, that's when I was superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> and and Miss Scholler was the high school principal. <laughs> So we've had a hand in new uniforms twice. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next, approval to the agenda. Do I have a motion? I motion. Do I have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Okay, next, globally competitive students. Student school board member report by Jonathan Jackson, Thomas Poston, and Rick Loggy. Uh, yes, sir. At the high school, there was an art extravaganza this past Saturday. <coughs> Many of the community's members uh, showed off their artwork, and some even had theirs appraised. I myself attended and would just like to emphasize the fact that we have a lot of talent in this county. 
especially compared to my lack of creativity in the artistic <laughs> world. Uh, if you'd like to see it yourself, not my work, but everyone else's, uh, there's a Spring in Arts Festival this Saturday, and I encourage you to attend. It's at the high school. Uh, Kelsey Gardner, she's a senior at the high school. She made it to the final round of the prestigious Park Scholarship at NC State University. Although she was selected as a first alternate, it is still an honor within itself to make it so far, so congratulations to her. The men's tennis team has a record of three wins and zero losses, so far undefeated, but they have a tough home game at, on Thursday against Edenton. The baseball team has an overall record of five wins and zero losses and is currently playing Northeastern tonight. The softball team has a current record of two wins and one loss, and the ladies soccer has two wins and one tie with a home game against Camden this Thursday. Lastly, before I pass it over to Thomas, I'd like to congratulate both Mr. Poston and Mr. Loggy to my left, as well as Suzanne Mullins and Tyler Carter of the high school as being selected to attend the North Carolina Governor's School Program over the summer. This is a remarkable achievement and they deserve all the praise. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, also, this week at Curta County High School, we have the Winter Sports Banquet. That'll be Wednesday night. Um, both early college and the high school will be sending students to the regional math competition on March 22nd. Um, on March 23rd, there will be the 2013 Curtuck Baseball Alumni Dinner, and that'll be at 6 p.m. at CCHS. Uh, tickets are $12, and they should be purchased from the front office of Curta County High School by March 15th. Um, and I would also like to tell everyone about the Curtick County um, School System Spring Musical. That'll be on March 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at 7 p.m., 7 p.m., and then 3 p.m. Um, we're really excited about the show. It's called Once Upon a Mattress, based on the story of the princess and the pea. And we hope everyone can make it. Um, we're going to have a great show for you. Thank you. Okay, so this year, J.P. Knapp received a record of over 100 applications from rising freshmen to be admitted to uh, Knapp next year. And on uh, March 2nd of this month, a team of four students participated in Moody's Mega Math Challenge, which, which consists of being sequestered in a room for 14 hours solid to work on a single mathematical problem. I'm pleased to inform you that... <laughs> The 16-page uh, solution was submitted on time and is awaiting uh, marking. Wow. On March 15th, all uh, freshmen at J.P. Knapp will be job shadowing. And uh, thanks again for uh, um, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, Thomas, Rick, congratulations on your honor of being chosen to go to governor's school. Shows that we select quality students to be school board <laughs> member representing. Okay, next item on the agenda, field trips. Ms. Scholler? Yes, um, we have the Curry Tuck County High School band trip to Williamsburg and Virginia Symphony, April 12th through the 13th. Also, Curry Tuck County Middle School, Moyoc Middle School, um, J.P. Knapp, Early College will all be represented at the FBLA conference in Greensboro, April 17th through the 19th. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on any of these field trips? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next, resolution opposing school property transfer. Superintendent Scholler. Board members, the North Carolina School Board Association has asked each um, local school board to pass a resolution opposing the move um, to transfer property back to county commissioners. Um, so I'd just like to read that resolution and ask for you to approve it. Whereas North Carolina general statutes prescribe that the powers of general control and supervision of school systems are to be vested in the local boards of education, not county commissioners, and whereas public school placement, design, and maintenance are integral components of the control and supervision authority that local boards of education have been statutorily assigned, and whereas to maximize efficiency and maintain supervisory powers, local boards of education must continue to control basic powers of school property ownership, 
and whereas as duly elected officers, local school boards, mem local school board members must continue to discharge their duties and responsibilities for the citizens of North Carolina. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved the Curry Tuck County Board of Education, for the reasons herein noted, opposes any proposed legislation that would authorize counties to unilaterally assume control of school property and respectfully request that the North Carolina General Assembly oppose any such legislation during its 2013 session. And our, our county commissioners, um, according to County Manager Dan Scanlon approve of this resolution. They don't want control of our facilities. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do I have a motion for approval? I motion that we approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the resolution? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next, uh, we have a digital learning presentation by Paul O'Brien, our Chief Information Officer. Good evening. I'd like to talk to you a little bit tonight about um, digital teaching and learning initiatives across the state and then specifically here in Curry Tuck County. This is an area that's getting a lot of attention these days. Um, there are several bills that are proposed that are in the legislature right now, um, haven't all been approved, but they're making their way through the, the houses, the House and the Senate. One to allow lottery money to be used to pay for devices, laptops, and those things. One, to um, make a transition from um, traditional textbooks to digital textbooks. One, to establish digital standards for teachers and administrators that they would have to um, demonstrate mastery on. Um, one, to try to improve broadband services throughout the state. There's still some areas of the state that don't even have access to, to broadband. And finally, um, a study on wireless classrooms to look at what level of wireless is really needed to support uh, a quality digital learning environment. So at the state level, this is getting a lot of attention. Also, the Department of Public Instruction has a technology plan that's in place right now. And the strategic priority number two is, is universal access to personal teaching and learning devices. Universal access is what we more commonly refer to as one-to-one. -one. In other words, every student has a device all the time. And as you'll remember, last year we passed our technology plan and our, we set some goals around that universal access. One was to ensure the infrastructure will support universal access. If I put a thousand laptops in Curry Tuck County High School, it's going to put a lot of demand on the wireless network. So in fact, over starting this week and finishing up after um, the break, we are upgrading the wireless network in Curry Tuck County High School to make it more robust and make it um, able to handle um, that many devices. We also have plans um, through E-rate funding, if that comes through, to upgrade the wired networks to Category 6 and the wireless networks to managed robust networks in our other buildings next year. Second goal was to evaluate personal teaching and learning devices, and I'll talk a little bit more about that one, and then to develop a sustainable plan. And we haven't developed a sustainable plan yet, but we're working our way to that. In our technology plan, we said we're going to evaluate some devices because there's a lot of options. Some people go with full laptops, some people are going with iPads, some people are going with um, iPod touches. And so we wanted to try these different devices and see what worked for us and what the issues were. So last year we set up, um, we put out some applications and, and asked teachers to apply for these pilots. And we have one pilot of iPads, it's an iPad card, it's at the high school. Um, the kids love it. They're powerful devices, but they're very difficult to manage. You have to realize from an enterprise point of view, when you put that many devices out there, we need to have some way to manage and control those devices. Um, and with iPads, it's very difficult to do. When the system engineer was here, he said, well, that's because iPads were designed to be consumer devices. That's what they made them for. So that's why it's kind of tough with those. Jumping down to the iPod touches, they have the same management issues, and plus they're smaller. The other thing we have to think about when we're looking at, at devices is we have to make sure we're going to get devices that will work with the state's testing system because the state wants to put all the tests online um, within the next couple of years. And we couldn't, if we were going to go with iPads, we would also have to then buy keyboards. So now you're um, close to $600 on those. And we also put out a, a cart of laptops, PC laptops. And they work well, but they're difficult to manage. Some of you will know if you've got computers at home, there's a lot that can go wrong with a PC. 
and not anticipating any additional technical staff at this point, I didn't see that as a feasible solution. So what we've done is we've begun to look at this Chromebook, and you may have seen um, commercials on this on TV. They've been running, it's, they call it the computer for everyone, I think. Um, and it's basically, it has the, the form of a laptop. Um, I've got one here. The difference is, instead of having all of the software on it that comes with a traditional laptop, it just runs a browser. Some, it's a Chrome browser, but it functions like Internet Explorer would or Firefox, those, those kind of Internet browsers. The reasons we like those, short boot time, you saw it come up from being closed, they boot in about 10 seconds, which is incredible compared to what our network machines boot. Long battery life, um, four to six hours, and that's because there are no moving parts inside, there's not a spinning hard drive, that's all solid state, so you don't need a fan, so all those things make it lighter, make it cooler, and the battery lasts longer. They're inexpensive. These devices, not this model, but the, the model that we're going to be trying, is $250. Hmm. You add management on top of that and a bag and some other things, and you get the device um, in the hands of folks for under $300. It integrates with Google um, Apps for Education. You may remember a couple years ago we went to Gmail for all of our email, and we went to Google Docs. And so every teacher, every faculty member, every student has a Google Apps account. And since these are operated on Chrome, which is a Google product, they integrate very easily with, with those applications. In fact, I, I'll be able to manage these devices from the same control panel I use to manage groups and mail lists and all those kinds of things. So those are some of the things that we're looking at as advantages. And, of course, any, everything has um, some pros and cons. A con is that they can't run non-native apps. In other words, what's on here is, is what you have to work with. You have to work through a browser. Um, so if you wanted me to install Microsoft Office on this device, for example, I couldn't. It just won't accept it. So that can be a downside for, for some programs if you need them, but we don't expect this device would replace all of our PCs. You're still going to need PCs for particular applications. Um, the good, the pro to that is I don't have to install Microsoft Office on all these machines, which would be another 70 or 80 bucks, and I don't have to install Windows on these, which is another 70 or 80 bucks. And for the most part, you need to be connected to a wireless network to get full benefit from these because most of what you're doing is, is online. There are some provisions for some offline work. If a student needed to take it home and didn't have wireless at home, they could do some work offline, but it would be limited. So that's the device, and, and as we're looking at this going to universal access, one of the big questions that we have to answer is, what does teaching and learning look like? What would it be different in a classroom if every student had access to a device every day? And up to this point, you know, we've got laptop carts out there. We've got 3,000 desktops, 800 laptops, but we don't have, except at the early college, we don't have this universal access model. So we went to some expanded pilots. I told you about the pilots we started, and now we're expanding that, and we're expanding it with these Chromebooks. At Curry Tuck County High School, we're in the application process right now, we're evaluating applications, where we had teachers from the core academic areas um, make application to get a, a cart of Chromebooks that that teacher would keep in his or her room all the time, so that for that teacher, every student, every day would have access to a device. And we want to see how these work. We want to see if, if these are really as good as we think they're going to be or not. So this is going to be a pilot. We've got four carts going to Currituck County High School. We've got two carts that will be going to Moyoc Middle School and one cart to Currituck Middle School. The difference in numbers based on the difference in size. And we're in that process now of evaluating the applications. So as we look to next year, if, our, if we have good results from our pilot, and if we think that this Chromebook is going to be what meets our needs, then we've begun to look at what it would take to put these Chromebooks in the hands of students in a true one-to-one. -one. Right now, we're doing projections for um, grades 8 through 12. We've been working in the capital outlay budget. We've tried to identify some funding sources that could be used to um, get this started. And we're optimistic that that's going to happen. Of course, as you know, budget's not final yet, but we're optimistic about that. So that would be... Again, if all the pieces fall together, that would be a huge jump in access for our county and for high school students at Curry Tech County High School and for grade 8 students at both middle schools.
Now, we don't have to do this alone. We're not paving new ground. There are other folks that have, have done this before. Um, for example, I mentioned the early college. They've got five years of experience behind them working with one-to-one -one environments. So we'll be tapping their expertise and getting them to help. We've got other resources through the Friday Institute, NCDPI, and other districts that have been working with these. So that's what we've got going on right now, and we'll be coming back to you and let you, letting you know how the pilot went and, and looking for, um, if things went well, looking for permission to um, proceed into next year. Any of the board have any questions? Mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing the results of the pilot. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item, consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Nobody signed up for the public comment session, so we'll skip that. Next item, information items. Our next work session will be Wednesday, April 17th at 4 o'clock at the Knapp Professional Learning Center. And please note that that is a Wednesday and not a Monday like our normal uh, work sessions. And our next board meeting will be uh, Wednesday, April 17th, 7 o'clock, right here. Once again, noted, if it's not a Monday, it's a Wednesday. Okay, board member comments. Ms. Etheridge? Yeah, just a reminder, like Jonathan said, at the high school this Saturday, the 16th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Spring into the Arts, $2 admission, for the visual arts workshops, get creative and take home some art today. There will be band performances, theatrical performances, chorus performances, art show, art projects, games, and food for sale. Sounds like a fun time. Come out and support the arts on Saturday, 10 to 2. Thank you. Mr. Simmons? Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody uh, on March 23rd, 6 o'clock at Currituck County Cafeteria, um, the annual uh, Currituck County Baseball Alumni Dinner. Uh, you can buy your tickets there at the high school um, sometime between now and March 15th. Uh, there'll be barbecue, hush puppies, baked beans, barbecue chicken, lots of food, and uh, all this money will help our baseball team. Uh, I had a really neat experience two weeks ago. Uh, our last board meeting, I believe Ms. Burns came in and did a thing from the Currituck County Middle School kids on biofuel. Uh, I had a chance to go down to Daytona two weeks ago and meet with a friend of mine there who is a farmer from Canada who farms approximately 30,000 acres of canola and flaxseed, which is used in biofuel. We had a chance to sit down with a computer and Skype back to Currituck County Middle School class, to uh, Miss Burns' class, which she had her kids prepped for it. Uh, a friend of mine who's a farmer, he said, I've never seen so many smart little eighth graders come up there and ask questions <laughs> about biofuel. But it was really nice. He did about a 30-minute Skype back to them. Uh, they had a chance to ask him questions about farming in Canada and growing biofuel, and it was just a really good experience for the kids of our county and a friend of mine who's a farmer. Uh, saying that, I'd like to tell everybody to support our spring sports again. Uh, when you come by the high school or middle schools and you see the lights on, stop by and see some good athletics, athletics in the springtime. Thank you. Ms. Kraft? Yes, I was fortunate um, two weeks ago this Friday to um, be at Moyoc Elementary School and Chalbra Elementary School to, for Read Across America. I read with Miss Peppy's fourth grade class. And then I went to Shawburn and read with Miss, and I know I'm going to mess this up, Mrs. Gerrara's kindergarten class and Mrs. Reynolds's fifth grade class. And also, I see Teresa's already left, but um, I just am so proud of her. I taught with her for all of the years that she taught there at Moyoc Elementary School, and it's a well-deserved honor for her to be our state TA of the year. Great. Thank you. Ms. Gaddis? Um, first, I want to start the evening with thanking all the parents and the children and the teachers and everyone that came out tonight that, like I say always, it's late night for us and it's a later night for these kids. So we do appreciate it when they take the time to come out and see us. Um, I, like Ms. Kraft, got to do the Read Across America. I went to Moyoc and Shawboro also. Um, and I'd like to thank Ms. Innes' class from Moyoc, um, who I really enjoyed going to, and then also uh, Miss West's class from Sharbro. Um, the kids were very welcoming and actually taught me a lot of things about um, 
Dr. Seuss's books that I didn't know. So it was very interesting. <laughs> um, and also, I just want to take a moment um, on the quieter note, I guess, to take a moment in, on behalf of the board to remember um, Fire Chief Scott Morrison that we lost um, this week in Knott's Island um, while he was in the line of duty. And I hope that everyone takes um, thoughts and prayers to his family and also takes the time throughout our community to hug, hug and thank those persons who put themselves on the line to keep all of us safe on a daily basis. Um, we are asking a lot of them, and they deserve all of our thanks. Thank you. I'd like to announce that Craytuck County High School is going to have the first annual <laughs> Craytuck County High School reverse drawing. It will be April 20th in the CCHS Cafetorium from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It will be a dinner and a raffle. Tickets are $25 each or two for $45, and the dinner will consist of either rotisserie chicken or pork, pork barbecue. And the benefits to this will go to the 14 athletic programs at Curita County High School. Since the last uh, board meeting, I had the opportunity to visit Moyak Elementary, Moyak Middle, Shawboro Elementary, Curita County High School, Curita County Middle School, and Central Elementary. Particularly, I wanted to go to Curita County High School to see how our new power hour went, and things seemed to be going really good down there during <laughs> power hour. Uh, Central, I had the opportunity to go in to a kindergarten classroom. I think it was kindergarten. Is that correct, Ms. Palangia? And got to hear the kindergarten students tell me about their pen pals, which is kind of appropriate since we talked about pen pals tonight. And their pen pals were the U.S. Navy, if I'm not mistaken. And how many of the Navy guys came? Yeah, three different Navy, um, Navy guys. Okay, three different people from the Navy that were pen pals with the kindergarten students came and visited with the kindergarten students. And they also brought along with them a robot that I guess the kids got to control as it went around the school and stuff. So found that quite interesting. And I have nothing else, so do I have a motion for adjournment?